Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan and I'd like to talk today about the gut-brain relationship. So if we are going to acknowledge that we've been led down a blind path in consideration of chemical imbalance and monoamine hypotheses of mental illness, then where should we be focusing our attention? Well, I'd like to offer up two decades of clinical research that suggests that inflammatory models of mental illness are a much more appropriate place to start. And it's in these models that depression syndromes, for example, are considered a downstream symptomatic manifestation of an upstream problem, the causes of which we may very well be able to identify. And some important tenets underlie this theory, one of which is that bodily states of inflammation or danger signaling as trafficked through cytokine messengers can translate to the brain itself mostly through the vagus nerve, which connects the gut and the brain. And then once there, in the microglia, which are the immune cells of the brain, this inflammation can be perpetuated. And there it can really wreak havoc. We know that it can influence how uh, different neurochemicals are produced. It can have negative effects on mitochondria, which are the energy production organelles in every cell that also determine when cells die, and that it can have impacts on the very sensitive feedback systems around stress hormones such as cortisol. And a fascinating body of literature suggests that these cytokines are related to states of depression in a dose response or linear way, that the more cytokines there are, the more depressed a person can feel. Uh, but also that we can induce states of depression through the use of inflammatory compounds. And we can resolve those symptoms through the use of anti-inflammatory pharmaceuticals, but also through the use of probiotics. So how is it that beneficial bacteria in a therapeutic dose could influence uh, anxiety states and behavior? And that brings us to the consideration of the gut as the primary point of entry in modifying inflammatory states. And we can consider the fact that the gut houses about 70% of our immune system and also is home to something called the microbiome, which is this ecology of different organisms and bacteria primarily that in many ways determine and are the gatekeepers for this inflammatory response. And so how is it that we can thera therapeutically treat and protect this microbiome? Well, it begins with uh, the physiologic birth, so a natural vaginal birth and breastfeeding early in life that seems to set the stage for what types of bugs are going to inhabit our body. But also, during the course of our life, we can make many decisions that can beneficially or negatively influence the state of that microbiome. And some important considerations are medication exposures like proton pump inhibitors, oral contraceptives, NSAIDs, and antibiotics, and also thinking about eliminating food toxins like genetically modified foods, herbicides and pesticides, gluten, and also sugar. And to think about therapeutic foods like fermented uh, vegetables and thinking about the potential that they might have to re-educate this microbiome and potentially also probiotics as a therapeutic intervention. So I hope that this has served as a primer on this very important relationship that I believe is the, is the future of psychiatry. So thanks so much for listening.